In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fix the WordPress 403 forbidden access is denied error. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we are all about WordPress. And if you want to get better at WordPress, make sure you stick around and hit the bell icon or the thumbs up or both while you're at it. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. If you're getting a 403 forbidden error or access denied error, there are three different things you can do to try to fix it. We're going to cover all three in this tutorial. The first one is finding a plugin that's causing the problem, which could be the cause, checking your HT access file to see if that's the problem, and checking your file and folder permissions. And the first one we're going to do is check out the plugins. So if you have a lot of plugins installed, as we do on this site, we're going to head into our file manager through cPanel, or you can do this via FTP as well. If, you, if you're more comfortable with FTP, open the public underscore HTML folder, WP content, and the plugins folder contains all of our plugins. Now, if we go up one level and we rename this folder, we can deactivate all of our plugins at once. I'm just going to call this dash off. And now all the plugins on the site are deactivated because of that folder name change. Now, if you go back to your site and you visit the site and it loads properly, or it loads at all, then the 403 error is caused by a plugin. If that's the case, come back out here, change it back to its regular name. Now go in to your plugins, click this checkbox to select all of them. Under bulk actions, choose deactivate. Now that we're deactivating them all semi-manually. By changing the folder name, we did it automatically, or not automatically, but we, we deactivated them all just with that one change but we don't want to have our plugins folder be a crazy name like that. So we change it back to plugins that will reactivate the ones that were previously active. Then we come in here, deactivate them. Now we come back here and activate them one at a time. Each time we activate a new plugin, we go back to our site. We do a hard refresh, either control shift R or command shift R or clear cache and cookies or use a different browser or use incognito mode. Use some method where the site is not cached and then you will see which plugin breaks the site as it's activated. So by doing one at a time, we can see exactly which one is the problem and then either delete it completely, install it fresh, find a different version of it, find a different plugin that does the same thing, or just figure out how to work around that problem if you find a specific plugin is the problem. If that is not the problem, the next thing we do is check our HT access file. To do that, we head back into our file folders on our server, either via FTP or via the file manager, go into public underscore HTML. Our HT access is a hidden file the period in front of the file means it's hidden. If you do not see HD access, click on settings in the top right. Make sure show hidden files in brackets dot files is selected. Or in other hosts, when you first open your file manager, there will be a little pop-up box that asks you where you want to go. On that pop-up box, there's a checkbox to show hidden files. Bluehost is a host that does it that way. So once we found our HD access file, let's just change the file name. Let's just change it to dash off again. Now, if we head back out to our site here and we do a hard refresh or you look in a different browser, just as before, someplace that's not cached, we see if the 403 error is gone. If it's gone, that means the HD access file is to blame. We have to generate a new one. So head over back to the dashboard, go to settings and then permalinks. And now on the server, if I reload here, we don't have just a plain .ht access file. But if we head into the permalinks where we were earlier, don't change anything. Click on Save Changes. Now if I come back out here and reload, we have a new HT access file that was just created just now. And this one should be clean. Now you go back to your site. Again, refresh or reload in a place that's not caching your site. And if it loads, then the HT access file was the cause of the error. Something to be aware of is often sites have data in the HT access file that you would like to have moved from the old one to the new one. If that's the case, or you're not sure, just open the new one by clicking on it to highlight it, then click on edit. And this is what's in a default WordPress HT access file. Now we open the old one, highlight it, click on edit. We see there's a bunch of other rules that are going on. There's a, a plugin here that has some rules in here. Here's the default WordPress information. Another plugin down here, we can either deactivate and reactivate those plugins or change their setup so that they put their information back in the HT access file, or we can possibly copy and paste it 
into the new HD access file and then see possibly what's breaking it or just have it working because there was some other error that was causing the problem. And that's how we'd move data from an old HD access file into our new one because some of that information is very important, especially if you're doing 301 redirects in your HD access for SEO purposes. It's very important you transfer that to your new HD access file. So if we've done the plugins in the HD access file and you're still getting a 403 error, the next thing to do is check file permissions. So we head back into our folder structure here. You would go into FTP if you like, or through cPanel file manager, go to public underscore HTML. Now the folders, the important ones, the ones you probably have on your site are WP admin, WP content, WP includes. These need to have permission of 755. On the far right here, we can see the permissions. These two have, or these three right here have 755, all of them. If yours don't, you can easily change it by highlighting whichever one or all of them. Click on permissions and just type in the numbers 755. And what this means is that the user, which is your account on the server, can read, write, and execute, which is giving WordPress the ability to do things. It needs the ability to do things on your server. The group is anybody else who has access to your server, which is usually nobody, but sometimes other, for, for more complicated server setups, might be others with access, and they're able to read and execute, but not write. And for the world, but that's this is people coming from the internet to access your website, they can read and execute, but not write. And execute just means running a file. So if you wanna be able to load a file, you gotta be able to execute it. So you can just go in here, type in 755, and then that'll change the permissions to what they need to be for WordPress folders. And you also have to go into all the subfolders. So if we open up WP content, for example, we have to make sure that they are all 755 for the folders. And if they're not, we just change it. And usually it doesn't take too long because not or barely any have the wrong permissions. So you might find a couple if you have a 403 error, you might not find any at all if that's not the issue. But you have to go through every one to make sure they're all 755. The files need to be either 644 or 640. The only one I ever have at 640 is a wp-config.php file. Every other file is 644. And to change those, same as before, select the files, go to permissions, and then just type in 644, and then I'll check the boxes as appropriate right up above. Click on change permissions, and then those permissions will be applied to those files. And this has to be done for all the files as well. So if we go into WP content, we have an index.php file down here. It's got to be 644. And go into WP admin. All these files in here have to be 644. And all the files within all the folders have to be 644. And it's a bit of work. But if this solves your 403 error, that's awesome. And if that does not solve your 403 error, and you've done those three things, your plugins, your HD access, and your file permissions, then you have to reach out to your host because they may have something on their server that's causing some kind of issue with your website. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you follow along, then hit the bell icon or the thumbs up and check out our private Facebook group, linked to in the description down below. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side to so get even better WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.